Good morning. We're back for pickups video. Now, just a little note. I did record this once. Um, right after recording the last video, uh, which I said I was going to do, and I did. Um, but the second half-ish of that video got messed up because somebody knocked on the door. Really kind of screwed things up. So uh, what I did salvage was the first half of the video where I have a package uh, from a one Chad Bailey. And uh, that one I did manage to uh, salvage, but uh, I can't get it to uh, iMovie edit in a timely manner. So um, you get this one first. <laughs> this this is going to be everything else uh, besides the Chad package plus uh, some things I've I've picked up since then actually. So here's just a um, a random um, I don't know kind of pickups from whenever the last time I did a pickups video. I don't even know. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, we got we got kind of a, a kind of a broad. Uh, collection of stuff um, as as is uh, normal. It's, it's supposed to it's, it's like some dust on it, but I don't know. We did, we've uh, we've been pretty into uh, books lately, um, and and not just um, paper books, but audio books actually specifically. Um, it's kind of a thing that I've always kind of entertained the idea of of getting into um, because I, I do have time to uh, listen to things. Um, whether actively or semi-passively, and when I listen to things, I tend to um, soak it in much better um, than uh, the written word, you know, <laughs> if I'm reading. Um, so uh, it was kind of a it was a very natural thing uh, for me once I decided to actually uh, give it a shot, and uh, man, I've just been just been binging books lately. I've finished several. In the last month, uh, I I uh, did subscribe to Audible.com because uh, they had a free trial, of course, and then I did sign up for the whatever package they have. It's like twenty twenty dollars, and you get two books a month, which you know isn't like a fantastic deal, um, but it's it's pretty good. Uh, so I ended up with uh, three of my first month because I did get the free book, and I did want to go ahead and, and do the twenty dollar per month thing, in which I got two more, uh, so that was good. And then I subsequently bought one on there because I finished the other three, and um, I've, I've, I've bought several others. Uh, but uh, so my first um, books were Helter Skelter, uh, which was fantastic. It's the the true um, story of the the Manson family murders and the trial, uh, written by the uh, trial prosecutor Vincent Bugliosi, and it was fantastic. Recommended to anyone who likes true crime. Uh, secondly, we did In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. Again, very good. Uh, a, a, a murder actually here in Kansas where I live, uh, but actually on the other side of the state. So it's not really local to me by any stretch, but um, still in state. So they referenced a lot of things in state that I, I know. So it was, you know, hit close to home to some degree. Uh, next was The Innocent Man uh, by John Grisham, a... Um, true story, actually, by Grisham, uh, which he doesn't normally do. He does normally a fiction guy, but this was actually a true story, which is what intrigued me. Uh, but I do plan on maybe reading some more Grisham because um, he did have a good writing style, like his actual writing um, in in telling the true story. You know, there is some some of his voice in that, so uh, it was enjoyable. So I might uh, I might look into some more because uh, I'm kind of into the whole crime lawyer thing mystery thing it's, it's, that's kind of my 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 go-to genre at this at, at this at this moment in time uh it is uh for audiobooks um but uh after the uh, those are my first three my freebies uh, but i did buy uh, walden by thoreau henry david thoreau which is a book i own uh more than one time um but uh it's it's an old enough book. It was written in the early 1800s, or actually mid mid 1800s, uh, in a in a way that we don't really speak anymore. And he's kind of a philosopher and a very intelligent dude. And uh, so the way that he writes and speaks is is just a little bit 
too long and drawn out for me to uh, read uh, with my eyes, and uh, I tend to get a little dozy and don't worry about it. But to listen to, it was an absolute pleasure. It's a very good book. Um, it's a true story, a uh, first-hand account of his experiences living on a lake by himself in a house that he built and a farm that he tended. It was it's a pretty good book. It was like three bucks on Audible, so it was kind of a no-brainer. Um, but we've also uh, moved on and uh, finished one other one um, that I did buy. And this one was actually at a local junk store um, where I typically find just either find nothing or just find junk, which I, I have a few other things from there. Uh, but uh, we did find this. It was actually an audiobook on CD. Uh, these were all, the previous ones were all digital, but this is on CD, uh, which was still not a big deal because I just ripped it and put it on my phone and listened to it the same way anyway. And that is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Again, I own this book already, uh, but I'm just such a slow reader. But uh, this was only eight hours, seven and a half hours, and uh, easily... Ten times, if not more, better than the movie. Even though I loved the movie, I thought the movie was fantastic. I loved, I loved it. I thought it was good. But this, right here, is a good book. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I recommended that to anyone because it's pretty awesome. Okay, um, I guess we'll stay in the vein of audiobooks because I did buy two others um, from the said aforementioned junk store and I did check one out from the library also but I'm not to those yet we got Michael Crichton's Congo on uh, cassette this is actually a total bummer because um, I I have no I have no problem dubbing this onto my computer with a cassette player and converting it to something I can listen to on my phone no big deal I can do that easily but this is an abridged, abridged version of the book, so probably not even gonna waste my time. This was like a dollar, so probably not gonna waste my time though. Uh, but this one I just picked up because um, again it was a dollar, and I don't know if it's any good. I don't know the first thing about this book, but it's the arraignment by Steve Martini. Again, um, I'm not out much, and again it's an audio book. I can just listen to it, and if it sucks, I don't have to finish it. Um, and then we did pick up some actual book books too, the the paper kind. Uh, we got uh, Ted Bundy, Conversations with a Killer. Again, I'm in the, the true crime mode. Evil Harvest. It's uh, this is actually a lot more local to me. It's a kind of a cult murder uh, that happened um, about mm, about 30 miles from me uh, in like the 70s. 80s. Yeah. 80s. Um, my favorite author, probably one of my favorite author, authors, Mitch Album, his book, Timekeeper. Found that for like a buck. It's cool. And then a classic for a $1. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce the um, author's name because I, I'm just not going to, but it's Crime and Punishment. Uh, for those of you who know what Crime and Punishment is, it's a classic. And that's the author's name that I'm not going to try to say because that would be disrespectful to say it and botch it. Okay, so that was the books. Again, I'm enthralled with audiobooks right now. I finished several, four, five, five in the last month or so, and uh, I'm on my sixth one right now, um, which is actually a lot more of an undertaking, but it's amazing so far. I'm actually doing Lord of the Rings right now, and... Uh, going to do The Hobbit as well, um, and then uh, probably Harry Potter as well. I've never read those, and uh, my folks have the audio versions of all those, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, and Harry Potter. So easy for me to jump in uh, at no cost, because they had them uh, already. So, so far, Lord of the Rings is fantastic, and again, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Like, I, I'm, I'm anything but a snob, but, man, 
there's entire characters and scenarios that even in just the first four hours of the book, five hours of the book, or all the farther I'm in, there's there's this whole sections and characters that are not even mentioned in the movies, which is fine. I know they had to cut things and it and it didn't I don't think it's ultimately affected things too negatively thus far. But man, there's some great stuff. I'm just gonna say it, Tom Bombadil. Where is Tom Bombadil? Because I like that character a lot. <laughs> but anyway, Lord of the Rings, fantastic. But everybody knows that. Everybody knew that it, it's, it's a good book. And that's why it made great movies. But I think it's a better book, probably. Okay, enough about <laughs> books. I'm sure I've bored some people to tears with my book talk. But... Uh, we got some well one one music CD and we got some video games. This is actually one of my my biggest regrets um, as far as my music collection is concerned was getting rid of this CD not too long ago because I I went through a phase um, where I was just ripping CDs onto an old computer and thinking man I could just sell these at a garage sale and make some money back and use the money for whatever. Um, I don't know, but it was a mistake um, for some of them. Some of them I'm glad to have gotten rid of because I don't really need them. And I don't, I've not missed them. But there's there was, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so where I did this. And I'm, I'm kicking myself because that computer is gone. <laughs> and uh, that is The Beatles' Love. Now this, um, it's hard to explain because I don't really know entirely what this is exactly uh what the purpose of it was but it's a pretty much a remixed uh, collection of beatles songs and several of them are um mashed up to get and put together like the beginnings and the ends of the songs uh flow together pretty well from track to track and within the tracks themselves uh so there's like several tracks you can see where it says uh more than one uh track title yeah in the in this, within one song and that's what's happening it's it's mashing them together and it's it's actually a fantastic listen if you're a Beatles fan um, even if even if you prefer um, the original versions that's fine but this is just a really cool uh, thing really cool project I guess and uh, this is this is my favorite way to listen to some of the Beatles songs it's definitely my favorite um, uh, collection of uh, Beatles music uh, over any over any single album, um, with the exception of maybe Sgt. Pepper, because I really like Sgt. Pepper, uh, and the White Album is really great too. Uh, but this one is uh, I love I love love. Okay, next, finally, video games. Um, not a ton, but let me tell you, there's some quality stuff here. Uh, first off, I want to give a shout out to a friend, uh, Eric. Uh, over at Nertopia, uh, we did a trade a while back. Um, I, I sent out some feelers in the Nertopia group saying, "Hey, you know, I got some stuff to trade, but really, what I really want is uh, a Pokemon Fire Red or Leaf Green because it's one of the biggest regrets of my gaming collection." Again, we're back to regrets. Uh, was getting rid of that game uh, a few years back, and I really would like it back. So, you know. Here's a list of list of stuff I have for trade, or you know I'd be willing to pay for it. You know if you if you know somebody's not not going to try and like ask for an arm and a leg. You know I I would have paid you know thirty thirty five bucks maybe I don't know shipped for it because you know I, I wanted it and uh, I'm I'm glad to finally have it now. My buddy Eric did hook it up, uh, so we got a Pokemon Leaf Green for the Game Boy Advance, and that is super awesome because I love Pokemon and Leaf Green is. For the unfamiliar, um, is a just a remake of the original Pokemon games for the Game Boy Advance, um, and he threw in a couple extras. One of which is this uh, Pokemon uh, Pikachu Game Boy Color uh, case, which you know, of course, holds my my dope ass uh, Pokemon custom Pokemon Game Boy Color, and uh, you know, you know. You know. <laughs> no, I didn't just stick that in there. Just now, this was actually what was in there. Uh, so that's cool. 
thank you very much for the trade, dude. Um, hope you enjoy the stuff that I sent you. And, uh, yeah. Very much obliged. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, what, some of this stuff I talked about in the last video, in the, or in the video that I had uh, initially tried to record, uh, and I'm sure I had much better stories to tell uh, then, because most of which I've forgotten the the, subs, the stories. But uh, we're going to show them anyway. We got <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons Heroes for the Xbox. Uh, this is one. Um, it's been on my list for a while, uh, not because I, he I hear it's actually any good, uh, but because it's um, kind of a Diablo-y, uh, hack and slashy type game, and uh, sorry, uh, that's my jam. So I'm glad to have that because I like that style of games, and I hear it's fun with some multiplayer, but I'm probably not going to play a multiplayer, but what ifs? We got XCOM, Enemy Unknown. Uh, clearly four dollars at uh, GameStop. Um, I hear pretty great things about the XCOM series, and I think that the second one just came out, XCOM 2, but I think it's just on PC, uh, which is fine. But I actually had this on uh, PS3, on PS, uh, what, uh, P PS Plus, but, um, you know, sometimes I let the PS Plus lapse, and uh, it's just because it's like... Uh, I don't feel like it's it's an absolute necessity to me, and uh, sometimes I just don't want I don't want to afford it um, because for whatever reason. And the the biggest downside to letting your PS Plus lapse, of course, is that you can't play the games that you've gotten for free as part of the service, um, which sucks. Uh, but whatever. Um, so I went ahead and bought it on Xbox uh, so I can play it even if I let my PS Plus lapse. But. I have not yet tried it, so I don't know if it's any good or not. Got Digimon All Star Battle Rumble or All Star Rumble. I'm get my light back. My, my PS3 heard me talking bad, so it turned the light off on me. All Star Battle Rumble or All Star Rumble, kind of a uh, fighting arena fighting game uh, with Digimon, which you know. Pretty cool. It's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. So, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say about that. I haven't tried that much. Uh, a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, we also did pick up uh, a digital game, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, which is pretty awesome um, RPG in the Digimon world. And it's, uh, it's, it's like a Final Fantasy X battle system. It's pretty dope. I've only played it like an hour and a half um, because I've just been busy with other things but it is pretty awesome can't wait to try it out some more um, glad to have it though i'm glad that it came to the vita because it was on ps4 physical release here in the states or vita digitally here in the states uh, which is fine with me because i don't have a, a ps4 anyway and at least i got it uh, at all so yeah glad to have it we got witch in the hundred night again with the diablo -y style games that i'm a fan of um, I heard this one's pretty grind heavy, and actually, I think this might this might be my first in this America game. Period. I don't I don't know if I have any others. I don't know, but uh, I I threw it in to play through the tutorial a little bit, which you know I haven't doesn't hasn't really shown me much, but I think it's gonna be fun. And I don't mind grinding games, but it did come with the, the soundtrack too, which was a total surprise because it was used at GameStop, and uh, he pulled the soundtrack out of the the drawer when he was getting the disc out, and I was like, all right, that's great deal and the guy was actually pretty cool he was like a he's a pretty big um rpg guy because he was like happy that i was buying that i guess because he talked to me about it uh, which is rare for a, a person at gamestop to actually talk to me about a game uh, but uh, he actually you know was talking about it and he was talking about the uh, odin's odin sphere uh game coming out pretty soon uh, which is pretty awesome um i like odin sphere i love vanillaware yeah, that was it was dupe. Bulletstorm, uh, limited edition. This was like a dollar at uh, GameStop. It was actually pretty sad how cheap this was. Uh, but it was the limited edition, which I don't know what the difference is. I think it's just the case, honestly. I think the limited edition content was like a voucher that's not there anymore. So it's just the, it's just the case now. That's all that was limited about this. But seriously, it was a dollar. And let me tell you, this game is dope. It's just a video game-ass video game. Lots of fun, shooting, and yeah. 
it's it's funny as shit, and it's 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 fun. This is worth uh, every penny of the dollar or seventy nine or whatever it cost. Yokai Watch, um, a Pokemon y type game. I typically try to, to stay in the same genre when I buy games. We buy shooters, we buy monster collecting um, type RPGs, and we buy uh, hack and slashy Diablo type RPGs and damn little else. That's that's what we buy here. But uh, again, I haven't tried this much yet. I, I'm ashamed to say I haven't played this very much. Lego The Hobbit. Uh, really been getting into uh, collecting some of these Lego games because they're fun and there's a bunch of them and I love that they retail um, like popular stories like the Harry Potter ones and the, and the Star Wars ones and the Hobbits and I'd like to pick up Lord of the Rings too um, especially because they're, they're pretty pretty timely for me right now being that I'm, I'm, I'm into Lord of the Rings reading the book right now it's 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 exciting uh, to get to play these I'm going to try to hold off and play them after um, I finish the book and then lastly here um, other than some digital uh, the digital ones we did get Pokemon Red and Yellow on the 3DS eShop because why not why not buy more Pokemon support the series um, that I love and have them constantly on my 3DS that's, that's never going to be a bad thing ever but <laughs> we did buy Deadpool on the Xbox One I watched the movie loved it never really got into Deadpool before but when and I went and saw the movie I thought it was hilarious and I'm a total bandwagon jumper uh poser snot whatever I'm a Deadpool fan now went and bought the game played it beat it loved it want to play it again actually because it was just a lot of fun uh I don't know if I'll do a video on that or not I don't know but uh yeah so that was cool all right uh iPad's probably going to die, so we're going to go ahead and get off of here. So I want to thank you all for watching very much. Uh, sorry that all I ever do is pick up videos. Uh, sorry, not sorry, I guess, because it's all that I really have time for anymore. Um, but uh, stick around. Hopefully we're going to do some more stuff in the future. Who knows? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Beam waves out.